Alas, the lone one longs for the land of his kin. In his breast he buries the burden of his loss. As he fares among the foreign, far are his dear ones. Though he sails overseas, his sorrow follows. Cold as such company, his cares never fade. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Philip Chase's The Way of a Dawn. The Way of a Dawn is a 2023 novel in the debut of Philip Chase and first in the Adon trilogy. Uh, it's actually the second thing I've read by Chase since I read his dissertation, or admittedly I read part of his dissertation as well. Uh, it starts with Finnan uh, finding himself on the steps on a, uh, steps of a temple of Angara, a major goddess among the Caragalese. He is with Egbert and Deda, and by the names of these three, we can tell Finnan is of a different people. <clears throat> but they have come to preach the way of Adon, in their eyes, the only true god. Uh, it is a very dogmatic way, uh, or path, almost like some early Christians, or maybe more in line with the covenant from Halo. <laughs> uh, there's a heaviness and sense of wrong that comes from Finnan's own misgivings while we are in his head. Uh, but then Zelsi takes hold and they desecrate the temple and are then brutally martyred. Uh, this greatly shows just how brainwashed his followers of Adon are, uh, and very much sets up the book. Uh, think White Cloak, so Wheel of Time, essentially. Uh, chapter 1 introduces us to Oswy, son of Oslof, uh, who is awaking, or walking sorry, with his dog Kip before finding a few dozen sheep slaughtered. Uh, there are many characters <laughs> in this book uh, in epic fantasy fashion. Uh, Day Raven is one of the chief characters. You could say he's our main character, probably. Uh, a name taken straight from that of a Frank in Beowulf. Uh, he's the son of Edgil, um, who is a thane in Kinsford. Uh, we meet him practicing with the sword. Uh, he's from the Mark, the Marchland of Torland. <clears throat> uh, we also have uh, Sakara, Sakara, Sakara probably, uh, who is a well-experienced woman. Uh, this is how we are introduced to her. Scenes of Sakara's childhood fluttered her mind along with an array of emotions, a poignant mixture of longing, affection, regret, and sorrow. Uh, she has returned to her childhood home before she leaves on some journey um, that has her uh, trepidatious. Um, it is with her we first see magic and it is that of healing. Uh, she is from the island nation of Astralad in the southeast, or southwest, sorry. Uh, Yoram, uh, Yoramon is a high priest of the way, uh, not concerned with celibacy. Uh, he has dreams of power, uh, leading the whole church and so forth. He doesn't seem all that evil when we meet him, just rather ambitious and not necessarily a good guy for our heroes, at least. Um, we do also have some other things, right? So we have some sort of fairy creatures, uh, Night Ganger or Pukas, uh, which is a puck, right? In the modern English, but um, goblin. Um, puck, I guess, if you read Midsummer Night Dream, right? Uh, anyways, uh, we also have like trolls and stuff like that later. Uh, and, and dwarves, right? They're not called dwarves. Uh, and one other thing that we'll get to in a second. Um, it's a good mix of cozy, uh, such as a warm bread and family feeling, right? It's also disturbing, though, at times. In fact, it's, it's very disturbing. Like, the first couple of things that happen are more disturbing than cozy. Uh, uh, there's a religious woodiness, uh, and there's being eaten alive and types of stuff like that. A few characters die early, so, so to speak. Uh, but I don't think we are led on uh, with them. I don't think uh, Chase hates humanity, like some authors I've read. Um, the idea of fates is dealt with since the way... Uh, and the polytheistic peoples uh, view this idea differently. Um, so we get some nice, uh, well, differing views on it. And I love how it's described on the back, I think. The book has a lament, which is basically Anglo Saxon poetry in a nutshell, and is a big influence on this story. Um, huge. In fact, I feel like it's more obvious in a way than even something like Tolkien's writing or even William Morris's. Um, the journey does not start in the middle of things, uh, but foreshadowing conflict is done really well with uh, microcosm to microcosm and history told in story. Um, it's also done by expectation that sits uh, in the character's shoulders um, and in their thoughts. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff in here, honestly, like the name Oswy gives some hints as that's the king of Bernicia who participated at the Synod of Whitby, um, which brought the English church in line with Rome rather than the Celtic. Uh, Edgil was a king of Sweden in the very distant past, um, and so forth and so forth and so forth. There's there's a ton. There's there's so many actually. Um, the name of the sword, um, right? Uh, Duola, which you can mean heresy or fault or error. Um, 
there's a lot. Um, I'm not going to bother you with those, but I'm sure someone could easily write uh, an essay on them. Um, that would be that would be pleasant to read, actually. Uh, it'd be kind of pleasant to write, maybe. Actually, now that I think about it. But anyways, um, um, it may be a little slow to start. Uh, there's much expectation, so it keeps the pages turning, and it's faster than much of epic fantasy. Uh, the Call of the Adventure is superb, and once it happens, um, a few chapters in, I'd say. Um, there are other DDs besides Adon, which are interesting. We don't get a ton about them. Um, we get an idea that they're they're well established in this world. Um, it's kind of like um, when you hear heroes mentioned in The Lord of the Rings, and you would have to read the Silmarillion to really get those ideas. Uh, so, um. We have another name thing also I wanted to mention as well, though, that there's this woman named Erd, which is probably the name Earth, uh, one of the Norns, one of the past, right? Uh, would be weird in English, I guess. The, the word, the name weird, right? Anyways, uh, Erd is uh, sort of an old woman who knows how to read uh, where most are illiterate. Um, she's kind of the wise wizard. You could look at the archetype if you want to go young again, I guess, as well. I realize I'm rambling and I'm all over the place. Um, there are elves. <laughs> Their origin is unknown and therefore the magic of origins doesn't work on them or some such. Uh, the superstition surrounding them seems built off uh, the little we know of Anglo-Saxon treatment of elves. Uh, they are associated with the bad uh, foreign version of magic. Um, it's a good a good answer. I think Phil Chase does a good job here of taking on the traditional elves. It's somewhere between bad and good. In fact, it's less romantic and personally a better answer than Tolkien's, if I could say. Um, though I like Tolkien's elves. Uh, they're, they're great, of course. Uh, there are dwarves, too, of course. Uh, dwarf. <clears throat> and then there's a scene with the Lee that's probably my favorite in the book. It enhances this idea of enlightenment or maybe a twist on transcendentalism. And his epic called adventure, so many little things I'm not sure uh, I've connected properly, but make me think. Uh, like Shapers uses a term for bards, like Old English uh, show. Um, or Louvers being mentioned and reminding me, discovering that word in William Morris's writings as a luffer. Um, that word is actually used a lot, Louvers, here, I think, anyways. Uh, doom doesn't necessarily have a bad meaning. It's like deem means judgment, right, here. Um, exile, of course, is worse than death. Uh, go read The Wanderer, an old English poem, if you haven't. It starts with oft him on haga. Um, there's even small, a little bit of poetry along these lines. I shared one kind of as a prelude here. And there's also a, a river named River, which I, I think that was funny every time that was mentioned. Uh, anyways, uh, my few gripes would be the slow pace. Uh, I kind of expected it, of course. Um, that's why it took me so long to get through this book, actually. Uh, it was just poor timing on the release for my schedule. Uh, so I read through a putter, part of it and then put it down. Um, but when I picked it back up, I finished it within a couple days. So um, I do wish we had more time with our main character as well. Uh, and though he is faded in many actions, he seems some... some Sometimes they come off as railroaded, which I guess you could say is faded, right? Um, but there also were a few times I don't think the prose worked. Um, I, I didn't really mark these down, and they were just small speed bumps where I was like, I don't know if I would have put that word in here. Um, some, something like that. Maybe just this little bit of the editor that's in me, even though I'm not much of a, a veteran editor by any means. But not anything can be perfect, of course, in writing, and I understand that. And uh, as a writer, and I don't think these scenes held the story back, really. The pacing is rather typical of epic fantasy, and this is better paced than Jordan or The Hob, I've read. Uh, it's definitely not sword and sorcery, though. Um, and overall, it's a fantastic debut, I think. Uh, anyways, and it's in the spirit of Morris and Tolkien, uh, but it's not a copy of a copy of a copy, like a lot of epic fantasy um, um, becomes, right? Or a lot of these people write fantasy, and they know they're in the spirit of Tolkien, or they're very obviously trying to to detach themselves from Tolkien in some way, and, and Chase does that um, while staying um, faithful in other aspects, um, but then they don't even know sometimes what they're actually staying true to because they don't know the older stuff, or they don't know what the older stuff was based off of, uh, and you don't have that problem here. There's a good voice, it tells a good tale inspired by many things, uh, many older and timeless fantasy tales have this as well, uh, and it doesn't shy away from action. Uh, very modern in that sense. It's dark at times. Uh, I didn't find it too grim, though. Um, a few moments of sublimity, I think, are likely to increase as the series continues. But overall, I really enjoyed this. Sorry, this is insanely rambly, but uh, I'm looking forward to book two. Uh, Liam from Loom's I see him. I'll catch you next time.